Okay, so I thought it would be useful to do a, a short video for beginners, and I'm a beginner, uh, at using Audacity to locate and then identify uh, bird calls through nocturnal migration or knock migging. And the first key thing is to set up Audacity specifically for knock migging, and it can be optimized for that. And I'll put a link at the end of this video to help with that. So if, you, if you're not done that already and you're just about to set off with Audacity, I'd strongly recommend that you do the setup first and then come back to this video later. But assuming you're set up and ready as this is, then the first thing you do is you upload the file you want to look at from the source. Now, I've pre-recorded this so that it makes it quicker and easier. But obviously, in the same way as you do with most things, you open. And this is a pre-recorded full session. But if you're using a recorder like a Tascam, then using a USB cable, then you literally read from the Tascam or the Zoom or whatever it is you're using into Audacity. And then it takes about 30 seconds to upload a four and a half hour file. Mine's set up in, to, to record in WAV. And it's a four and a half hour, two gig um, sort of sound file. So it's quite, um, it's quite big and it takes a while for it to upload. And this is what it looks like. This is the first screen you'll be met with. First thing I always do is just to pull that down so you, you can see things more clearly. And the first thing to note is uh, that you're never going to see anything at this this scale because you're looking at the whole of a four and a half hour recording session. So to be able to actually see bird calls, then you need to start zooming in. So as, you, as I zoom in, there's always a little bit of a lag because you're dealing with big sound files. But again, you can see already the top scale is or the bottom scale whichever way, way, way you want to look at but the top scale here you're now looking at a screen which covers 15 minutes 30 minutes an hour keep zooming keep zooming and although opinions differ um, i go with 15 second 30 second so basically two minutes per screen uh, and i find that i don't miss much at that and that will now be your starting point so in order to scroll through a four and a half hour recording then you have to do it manually there's no alternative but you're looking for signatures now the first thing you notice is there's a huge amount of noise here and uh, this recording session just happened to coincide uh, coincide with a police helicopter doing a training session overhead so it played a big part in the first hour or so um, but that actually is quite useful uh, as we'll see shortly so what I do in, in order to click through, you see already I'm up for the first four minutes, is using the mouse, this is how I do it anyway, just on the bottom scroll bar, you just keep clicking away until you find either clear space or something interesting. Now it, it, it's difficult because there are, I, there, I've already seen a couple of interesting things, but the noise level from the helicopter was so high, almost impossible to, to, to drown that out. And if you look carefully down here, you can even see the signatures of the rotor blades as they go through. <laughs> so um, so th this, this was prevalent throughout the night, well, certainly the first hour or so. But what you're doing is you're clicking through and you're looking, instead of uh, for all this rumbly stuff down here, or oh, hopefully I'll see one in a minute, there, for example, that's a, huge, that's a, a click made from maybe a bit of plastic nearby after a hot day clicking. So you get lots and lots of these pops and clicks, which you learn that they are always you know, unnatural sounds made by humans or um, sort of physical things rather than natural bird calls or animal calls, because you do get foxes and things like that on knock making sessions. But before long, here we are 23 minutes in, 22 and a half, which was nearly 23 minutes into the first session. Here's a signature. And I'm going to play this, but on Zoom, it doesn't seem to pick it up very well. 
but maybe you will be able to hear this particular if I put a bit of gain on and I'll just play this here I know exactly what it is without even playing it so that's coot and it, you can see on the signature that it starts picking it up here at nearly 23 minutes just 23 minutes what 48 and then in uh, over the next sort of 30 seconds or so 35 seconds it passes overhead and this is obviously when it's directly overhead the strongest signal and then you can see it fading off into the distance and yeah through a pair of headphones you can hear it all the way from when it first makes contact until it goes out of range so what you want to do with these calls certainly to begin with so you get familiar with what a signature looks like that's a fairly characteristic coot um, sonogram so you drag across and you highlight the area of the call and you can then export that so you can export it as a sound file using export selected audio you put it in the format you want uh, so there's lots of options including mp3s if you want to upload um, in a compressed format but i i save everything uh, as 24-bit wav files and they obviously name it uh, and then save it for later or for sharing with others particularly with mystery calls because you might want to share those to get other opinions the other thing here is that there's still this background hum from the helicopter because even though it's about a mile away it's still making a lot of noise and although the call is nice and clear um, you can still hear this background noise the great thing about audacity is you can actually filter out a lot of low level and high level stuff to make it easier to hear and then to save the cleaned up version so again you highlight the same area but this time in effect you go to high pass filter and what you're doing is you are um, taking out some of this extraneous noise down here so i can see the first strong call from the coot is there that's at about 700 hertz so i'm going to take out quite a bit of noise particularly the helicopter here at uh, sort of maybe 550 hertz and you should see this visibly change th this area here should visibly change once that filter pass has been applied and there it is you, you can see it just light uh, lightened a bit and although it probably won't make much difference to the actual sound again I'll just play that and that I can tell straight away through a pair of headphones that a lot of that background rumble and hiss has gone so that's the way you clean it up i'm still at these 15 second uh, intervals which is usually enough for me anyway to spot most calls um, and i just keep clicking through now until i find something else there's a little click probably from a bit of plastic creaking so you get lots and lots of pops and clicks. So you will learn to spot those and to, to, to ignore them. So you're not checking every single signal that you see. Um, but just this is how quickly you can go through a two and a half hour session. Again, the helicopter is coming a bit closer again, which is what all this background rumble is here. Um, but here at the end of it, I don't know if you can see that there, you imagine that, that under normal circumstances you won't be getting that amount of rumble up at three uh, three thousand hertz or three kilohertz so this would actually stand out much clearer than it is but if i just zoom in again here's a bird call and i'll play it You might be able to hear that. It's quite faint, so it's, it's obviously not overhead. It's somewhere in the distance, but it's a moorhead. So you can do the same thing again. You can clean this all up, and you can then re then save that uh, for later and name it moorhead. So that's basically how you do it. Uh, you zoom back out again once you've looked at something more closely, and you keep scrolling through until you basically run the session. 
there, there is no shortcut to it. So you have to keep um, your eye in. Some people use this uh, color version. So if you go to spectrogram settings, so that's this little area here, full session, drop down, spectrogram um, settings, you can take out the grayscale. And some people find this easier to see um, the colored version, but I actually prefer the grayscale. I find it easier to spot things, certainly in the area that's interesting for potential bird calls. So hopefully that's been useful. And um, I'll do another video shortly on some of the other things that I've found in the relatively short time I've been doing this. And to know that there's a lot of experts around who've been doing this for a long time, lots of tips and tricks uh, online too. And I'm sure other people do things slightly differently, but this is the way I've found works for me, which hopefully it will for you. Oh, there we are. There's another one. So can you see that there? Again, I'll go back to grayscale. And hopefully you'll see what I mean. I say I find that easier to see. And if I just play that. Now, I don't know how audible that is, but um, again, through a pair of earphones, which is often how you, what you do in order to work through a, a session. Um, but that's actually a common sandpiper. So this was quite a busy night and it's the kind of stuff that you will get if you do not mixing, not wigging sessions on a regular basis. Okay. Hope that helps. Cheers.